So a few of the things that I did to the bike once I got it um, had some really unpleasant looking bits on it. The bar ends were gold or brass looking. Really didn't go with anything other than these hideous spikes that were there. I'm not a spikes kind of guy. I get it. Some people like that stuff on their helmets, but I like a clean bike as, as uh, factory as I can keep it. Because uh, I think usually when they come from the factory, most of the times they look proper. This is one such case. This bike, I've always liked the look of it. Uh, back in 2002, I had an RC, not an RC, but the junior version of this, which was the uh, VTR Superhawk 996. It was another V-Twin offering, basically a more pedestrian version of Honda's offering in the V-Twin arena. Uh, and this was their race going bike version. Uh, a little bit more sporty, uh, meant to be a competitor in Superbike. And so, uh, you know, this is one that I've always sort of sought after and, and wanted to get a hold of and the opportunity came up and, and I could not pass it up. Uh, like I said, those were the cosmetic things I did to it. Um, mechanically, it didn't really need anything. It was running a little uh, rich. The Power Commander on it is really old. It's a Power Commander 2. Uh, with this bike being the age edit that it is, that's kind of what was out at that time. Um, it's got the Yoshimura RS3 exhaust on it, which is a pretty popular uh, option for that. Um, and then it's got K&N air filter. So uh, it's got a mapping on it. I had to actually do some up updating of the mapping because the Power Commander had lost its mappings. I don't know if it was maybe the battery got changed or something happened. So it wasn't, it wasn't running properly. Uh, what would happen is I'd come to a stop after it warmed up and essentially the bike would die at idle. It'd fire back up and you could go on. As long as you were driving or riding steadily, it did fine. But when you came to a stop, it just continued to shut off. So did some research, a lot of things on the forums. This is not something uncommon to anybody who owns one of these bikes. It's got a really, really loyal, almost cult-like following to it. Um, so there were things out there to sort of help troubleshoot that. I nailed it down to a couple of things. The spark plugs that were in it weren't the ones that were originally for this model. Uh, there's an SP1 and an SP2. Uh, the SP2 came out in 2002, uh, and it featured a different swing arm than this, a little better uh, pro arm system. Um, they had done some different things to the handling characteristic as well as the fuel injection uh, mapping system. So it was a little smoother bike to ride on the track because the racers were having problems getting the power down through the corners. It's a very, very powerful bike. Lots and lots and lots and lots of torque, um, and, and it's just a thrill ride. Uh, very thumpy and when you twist that throttle it rolls out so anyway back to the problem i went and uh, researched some of the issues uh the mapping wasn't proper updated the mapping and then it needed a throttle uh not a throttle body but a uh, a fuel pressure regulator which is the main culprit of something like that so if you've got one of these bikes and you're experiencing um you know the bike dying at idle once you've warmed it up and, and the chokes off it's most likely going to be your fuel pressure regulator uh could be your spark plugs they foul up pretty good if you don't change them regularly um, I went ahead and changed the plugs as well as did that and as soon as I put that fuel pressure regulator on it The thing was golden road rode like a dream. You could feel all the power back in the bike uh, Obviously fuel pressure is a key component in getting the power out of the engine and to the ground So um, just kind of you know some things that I did to the bike uh, It's got pretty high mileage, but relative to the year model of this bike. It's not that high um, It's roughly about 50,000 miles. It was a one owner bike um so it was pretty well taken care of. I've got tons of parts to this thing uh, that were with it from original. So I've got all the original parts with it as well as all this aftermarket stuff. So um, it's pretty sorted out. It's pretty well cared for and it runs really great. Um, still got the tag on it from the dealership. I was pretty confident buying it from the dealership. Those guys are really good over there at receiver and uh, they've treated me well in the past. And so I knew it wasn't getting something that hadn't been sort of at least looked through to make sure it was worth taking in their inventory and trade and then selling it with their name on it. So um, they didn't put a ton of money in it. Like I said, the fuel pressure regulator was a, a minor thing that needed to be done. Other than that, man, this thing is rare and to go. And, and it does so when you're, uh, when you're on the road twisting the throttle. So again, we'll be uh, doing a review on this and uh, should have a good time. All right.